bless you, my rabbi, Shana Tova, to everybody. And it's a great opportunity and privilege to be sharing this word that has just stirred up my heart for the past few months. And as we experience this beautiful brand new year that Yeshua has given us, it is our honors to be really talking and contemplating on the kingdom of God that is at hand. And as we see the ministry of Yeshua in Matthew chapter 4, we read that verse 12, now when Yeshua heard that John had been handed over, he withdrew to Galilee, leaving Nazareth. He came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet saying, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations, the people sitting in darkness have seen a great light. And those sitting in the region and shadow of death on them, a light has dawned. From then on, Yeshua began to proclaim, turn away from your sins, for the kingdom of God is at hand. What an incredible proclamation Yeshua makes. All that he had come to do was to begin to give an instruction to everybody he met, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. This kingdom is led by a king. And in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, we read, Now in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will this kingdom be ever left to another people. It will crush and bring to an end all these kingdoms, but it will endure forever. For just as you saw a stone cut out of the mountain, yet gnawed by hands, crush the iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold, the great God has made known to the king what will happen in the future. This was Daniel interpreting the king, the king's dream. And today we take that many uh, church fathers, many students have come up to the understanding, yes, the kingdom of Babylon was being spoken of, the kingdom of Persia was being spoken of, the kingdom of Greece was being spoken of, the kingdom of Rome was being sp spoken about, and that the stone being cut out without hands referred to Yeshua's incarnation, and he comes on the scene and he says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What an instruction we have as we enter into a new year. We leave an old year and begin a new year with an understanding that there needs to be an impetus upon each and every single one of us. I am so full of joy that from the least nation, you know, when we count nations, Zimbabwe is on the list of the alphabet. But from this nation, we are making a proclamation. We are making a decree that repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. What a beautiful place to be at. Matthew chapter 21, verse 42 say, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Isaiah 28, verse 16 saying, that, Therefore thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone, a firm foundation. Whoever trusts in it will not flee in haste or be afraid. This is the stone that Daniel was speaking about. This is the stone that we see in the New Testament. This is the very stone that Yeshua speaks about, that the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And Daniel says, this stone is going to crush every kingdom that is not of God. A word of encouragement. What a word of joy as we start the new year. That whatsoever kingdom that tries to stand before this kingdom will be destroyed. A kingdom not made with the hands of men or a stone cut by the hands of men will appear 
and will destroy every other kingdom, establishing a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. And this kingdom has a king that we are enjoying the coronation of today who will reign forever and ever as is spoken in Exodus 15, 18. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Then he became king in Jerusalem. When the heads of the people assembled, the tribes of Israel together, he became the king in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 5. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, we read, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord is our God. He alone is the Lord. What a moment the Gentile and the Jew stand together in one place, proclaiming that the king is the king of kings. And this king dispenses justice. This king reigns forever and ever. This king is robbed in grandeur. The Lord is robbed. He is girded with strength. The world stands firm. It cannot be shaken because it has been established by this king. Isaiah 44 verse 6 says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, their Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And there is no God but me. We look at every other mountain that has tried to rise up. It is a crazy situation when you enter into Jerusalem. You have the Muslims, you have the Catholics, the Anglicans, you have the Orthodox, you have the Jews, and they're all in this one place. Brethren, that is not a mistake. It is a sign and a wonder because the King of Kings is going to rise up and take his place and take dominion over every other kingdom. And you and I are the ambassadors of that king. Oh my gosh, that makes me feel special that I represent the king of kings. I am graft. Pastor Matt talks about how we are grafted into Israel. And because we are grafted into Israel, whatsoever portion is given to Israel, I partake of it. We say, Shana Tova, sweet new year. The promise made to Israel is the promise that is made to me from this place, from Africa. We rise up and we say we have been grafted into Israel to reign with the King of Kings. To stand in his majesty, to walk in his grandeur to stand strong and establish his kingdom in this season, in this time. Guess what? We may not see it with our eyes. We may not even hear it with our ears, but in our hearts it's inscribed that the kingdom of God is at hand. The stone which Daniel saw is alive and it's established today. The stone is the king of kings that we are all waiting for. That is the same king who walked on the earth and proclaimed the kingdom of God is at hand. His mission was not only to heal. His mission was not only to feed the thousands of people, but his mission was to say to Israel, the time has come for you to understand that the king is establishing his kingdom. And today we are reminded of the same decree, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Like a mighty rock, it will crush all earthly kingdoms. Doesn't that bring comfort to you? Doesn't that bring a joy to your heart? Doesn't it make you want to raise your hand, shabak to the Lord, sing praises unto his eternal king? Because it reigns forever. But we are warned, as Mrs. Masio said, the king will come like a thief in the night. The king will come at midnight. You and I, hey, do we have enough supplies of oil like the five wise virgins who had enough oil so that when the groom came, they were ready to go with him. They were not distracted by anything else. They were not unprepared like other, the other virgins, but they were fully prepared. They would not go to sleep because they knew he was coming. 
Are some of us being put to slumber by what we see in our current world? Are we currently getting tired and are beginning to lose control and lose our concentration and running out of oil? We need to fill it up quickly. We need to fill it up quickly. And that's what Yeshiva Chu is bringing to the nation to say, fill up your oil quickly because the king is coming. He will separate the gods and the sheep. The king will shine so brightly. He will swallow all darkness. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 24 says, Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to, the, to God the Father. After he has destroyed all dominion, all authority, all powers. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to destroy is, to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Yeshua. When he has done this, then the son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. The kingdom of God is an end. I want to conclude by reciting the great Elenu prayer. Let all be manifest in all your works, and may all creatures come to know you. We pray for a dramatic revival of God's presence in the world that instills dread and awe and leads not to, to division, but to the unity of all mankind, the Jew and the Gentile coming together, establishing the kingdom of God, making preparations, making way for the kingdom to be established. May all our children unite in one fellowship and Bring the dominion of Yeshua onto all earth, removing the dominion of tyranny from the earth. This is the messianic vision. This is what we follow. Abba Father, we glorify and praise your name for creating us for such a time as this, to be the menorah in the places that we are in. Yes, we are the light of the world. We will not be hidden under the table, but we will be put on top of the table so that we can be a light to all the nations and begin to show direction and begin to show the way and begin to bring order as it was in Genesis chapter one, when you saw the chaos on the earth and you spoke and there was order. May we begin to walk in your footsteps, in your authority today to bring order in our world today, in this brand new year. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Yeshua, you reign on high and we exalt your holy name forever and ever. Shana Tova. God bless you. Shabbat shalom to everybody.